have our uh, screws already planned out. We planned them out about a week ago before surgery. The patient had a preoperative CT scan, and what we're doing is we're aligning the trajectory of the screws in the lateral view, which is this view here, and the, the axial view, to make sure the screws are going into a uh, really precise and accurate uh, position. And what the robotic arm will do is essentially go to this, this same trajectory here, and we drill and put our screws in, so it's very accurate and very precise. So we're going to go meet the patient in the pre-op holding area right now to make sure that the patient uh, has all their questions answered. Uh, before surgery, I really make sure that they understand kind of exactly what we're doing. We meet multiple times to explain things and the steps of the surgeries, the risks, the benefits, and all those things. And we're able to place these screws and plan for these screws uh, weeks before surgery. So even before surgery today, I was able to uh, know exactly what size screw, the trajectory of the screw, even before we make an incision. So it's uh, one of those things that I love about spine surgery. Future is the sponsor of today's video. Future is a new fitness app that pairs you with a very specific coach to essentially meet your fitness needs. Upon signing up, you'll do a FaceTime call with your trainer and with your coach and then develop a very customizable workout plan. As a very busy spine surgeon, there are a few things that I really try to focus on. Number one is family. Number two is health. And number three is fitness. I have other videos about why I wake up at 4.44 every morning. And lately, I've been getting up even before that. During this time, I try to work out at least three to four times per week. First thing in the morning, because as a surgeon, if I wait until the end of the day, that workout may not get done. The biggest issue with a lot of people is actually the discipline to get things done. The discipline to get up at a certain time, the discipline to eat the right foods, and the discipline to get a workout in that day. And the best way to improve your discipline is with accountability. The workouts are pretty easy to follow through the app, and then during these workouts, you can actually record it and send it to your coach for specific feedback. The thing about this future app is that it doesn't require any weights. You can essentially work out anywhere, on the go, in the hospital, at your office, and keeps you moving, gets your heart rate up, and gets you going. If you're ready to start building the discipline it takes to achieve your fitness goals, Go to the link in the description below to choose your coach today. You can try your first month with Future for just $19. Good morning. You ready? I'm ready. Once we, once we actually get down there, we'll clean out that disc, we'll put the spacer in there, and then we'll flip you over in your belly, and then that's where I'll use the robot to place your screws, okay? And uh, you already had your CT scan, so I already know what size screws to use. I know exactly where they're going. The robot just assists me in surgery to uh, place those screws very accurate, okay? Oh, wonderful. And then we'll get you up with physical therapy, get you walking, get you moving, and um, if you're doing well, we can get you out tomorrow. <laughs> These are the patient's x-rays here. This is a flexion extension view that essentially shows the slippage that this patient has, um, her vertebrae is slid forward. What happens is when it slides forward, there's less space and less room for the nerve back here in this little hole or foramen. So she has pressure on her spinal canal, pressure on her nerves. The goal of this operation is to relieve that pressure and place a spacer so that it indirectly takes the pressure off the nerves and spinal canal. This is the MRI scan here. You can see the slippage at this level here. This patient has had previous surgery. I can see the uh, decompression that's here. And there is spinal stenosis or narrowing of the spinal canal. So our goal of the operation today is essentially to remove that pressure to make more space for the spinal canal and nerves. So there are many different ways to approach the spine. One way is actually to go to the front of the spine 
that's called an A-lift, and then we can get a really good discectomy and uh, place a really good size cage. We can actually go from the side also, that's called a lateral fusion, where we're a patient's position on their side, and we're able to go this direction, or we can go posterior, and there are a couple different variations, transforaminal, we can go obliquely, uh, or directly posterior, that's called a PLIF. You know, there's a couple different ways to approach it. Today we're doing a A-lift, we're going through the, the abdomen, to uh, remove that disc and place a really good sized cage in there. One, 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 heart, one shot, now the future is yours. Go, yeah. So this lady has been in a lot of pain uh, over the last few months. She's been my patient for almost a year. We have to make sure that we're operating on the correct level. That's why we use the x-ray and fluoroscopy in surgery to make sure that once the vascular surgeon provides excess and moves the vessels out of the way, then I can go in and do my part, uh, which is to clean out the, the diseased disc and place that spacer in there. This is the, uh, the disc here that we're taking out, the diseased disc, you can see. It has the uh, angular fibers on the outside of it and the nucleus, so the small portion on the inside, so. So right now we're, we're trialing, basically sizing the disc space. Everybody's a little bit different in their anatomy, so we have to get the right size cage in there. After we trial it, we'll put the real implant in and uh, put some bone graft through the cage so it fuses. Mallet, mallet please. Mallet. I like the uh, width of this. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah. I'm not sure if we need to go any bigger than that. Yeah. Minutes. So this is bone graft, um, you know, synthetic bone graft that we use to put on the inside of the bone. So this will help the bone grow together and fuse together. It's a couple different um, uh, types of bone graft that we can use, auto graft from the actual patient, auto means the same. Uh, you can use allograft, which is considered allograft, and we mix it with a uh, bone marrow aspirate to uh, achieve a fusion. So this will go inside the cage, and this is going what's, what's going to help the patient fuse, fuse their bone together. This is the uh, cage here, and this is what's going to go in between the bone to help it fuse together. It's a spacer, and it has pins, screws that go into the bone. This is a 3D printed spacer here. So this is what's gonna replace the disc that we remove. So what I'm doing is putting the uh, bone graft on the inside of this. And the rest of this bone graft we're gonna place in the back of the uh, patient's spine when we are putting our screws in to help it fuse from the back. This is the cage that we're placing on the inside of the bone. We have the, um, the screws on the inside and they're gonna go into the bone and hold it in place.
we just finished the anterior portion of the surgery. We did the uh, A-lift, put the cage in there. Uh, she's had previous abdominal surgery, so usually when that happens, there's a lot of issues with scarring and also uh, inflammation. So the vessels that are in the front of the spine, we weren't able to move them over enough to put the cage directly down the middle. So the cage is in a good position. It's just, I usually like it right down the middle, which is, in her case, previous abdominal surgery, you know, we got a good sized cage in there. We took all the pressure off the nerves and spinal canal. I think she'll do fine. We're actually gonna get ready for the posterior part of the procedure, put the, um, the pedicle screws in using the robot.